In 1985, the Cougars were selected to play in the kickoff classic, where they scored a decisive victory over Cotton Bowl champion Boston College, winning an unprecedented 25th straight football game. Ten consecutive WAC titles and increased national visibility brought well-deserved recognition for the talents of BYU athletes. In 1986, defensive tackle number 99, Jason Buck, became the first BYU player ever to win the Outland Trophy, presented to the outstanding interior lineman in all of college football. In 1989, Offensive lineman Mo Elawanibi won the Outland as well. Despite the amazing record of BYU quarterbacks, none had ever won the Heisman Trophy. It took a fair-haired kid from Texas, one with a slingshot arm and the heart of a lion, to claim the most prestigious award in all of college football. His name was Ty Detmer. Ty was one of those kids, just like Jim McMahon. If he wasn't out there two or three days, then Norm Chow came in one day and told me that we're back in the quarterback business. From the beginning, Detmer had a flair for the dramatic. His appearance in a game was like a shot of adrenaline for the BYU offense. He seemingly played with a sixth sense that enabled him to instantly identify and exploit a defense's Achilles heel. Ty Detmer understands what he wants to accomplish in this offense. He knows that he's not supposed to get greedy. He's supposed to take what a defense will give him, be happy with that, but then when the opportunity comes to strike, you hit it, and you hit it big. They always say the great quarterbacks have that intangible quality about them. Like, you know, Joe Montana, there's, there's something about them that makes them go that extra mile. There's something inside them that makes them, that makes them different from everybody else, that makes them better, that will make them reach for that extra inch. And I don't know what that is. I can't pinpoint what that is, but Ty Detmer has that. Some people have the heart. I mean, he has a heart as big as a house. He'll die out there before he gets off the field. Despite his boyish looks, Detmer was the ultimate field general. Most of the quarterbacks that I've been associated with here and, and the ones before Mark Wilson, Gifford Nielsen, Bosco, Young, McMahon, you know, they all seem kind of quiet off the field, but yet when you get on the field, the quarterback's got to be the guy to take control and, and maybe, you know, give a pep talk in the huddle or something, you know, and I think every good quarterback has the ability to do that. In 1990, he passed for more than 5,000 yards, becoming the most prolific passer in NCAA history. On December 1st, 1990, he received fitting recognition of his heroic deeds, joining legends like Doak Walker, Roger Staubach and Marcus Allen as a recipient of the Heisman Trophy. It was truly another great moment in BYU football history. The young Texan had captured the heart of America with his dazzling performance in 1990. And in 1991, 
he would continue in his quest to rewrite the collegiate record books. With one arm wrapped around college football's highest honor, Detmer would now try to carry his new team back to the top of the whack. But could he do it alone? Gone were All-Americans Chris Smith and Andy Boyce. BYU began the season with only three returning starters on the entire offensive unit. Young and inexperienced, the Cougars would prove to be no match for what was certainly the nation's toughest early season schedule. Number one ranked Florida State, Pac-10 force UCLA, and Eastern powerhouse Penn State. All three games were against top 20 teams. All three were on the road, and all three would be losses for the fresh new Cougars. BYU was 0-3 and still hadn't played it down inside Cougar Stadium. Lavelle Edwards knew the importance of their home opener against Air Force. It would be the start of the 91 WAC schedule, and a victory here could turn things around for the battered and bruised Cougars. Ty Detmer must have sensed the urgency as well, as he took control of the skies in this contest completing 20 of 30 passes and leading BYU to an impressive 21 to 7 triumph. The victory seemed to give this young team a brand new life. They tore through their next six opponents, averaging more than 500 yards of offense and over 40 points a game. Week by week, the Cougars' confidence just kept growing, and the victories kept coming. They had grown up from their early season adversity and now had their sights set squarely on another conference title. By mid-November, BYU was 7-3 and, and headed for a showdown with the red-hot Aztecs of San Diego State. This would be the game to determine the 1992 WAC championship. The Cougars were a perfect 6-0 in the conference. The Aztecs were 6-1 and, and boasted one of the most explosive offenses in the country. It was here, before a record crowd of 57,000 at Jack Murphy Stadium, that one of the greatest games in WAC football history was about to unfold. From the very first play, Aztec quarterback David Lowry led an all-out assault on the injury-plagued BYU secondary. Lowry completed touchdown passes of 75 yards, 79 yards, and 80 yards in just the first half. Touchdown, San Diego State, 80 yards. Drive after drive, he shredded the Cougar defense while piling up a score of 45 to 17 late in the third period. For many teams, the 28-point deficit would be too much to overcome, but Detmer and the Cougars would never say die. With 22 stitches above his eye, Detmer now wore a fierce look of determination. With the clock counting down, he quickly rolled right and found Jamal Willis for a 49-yard pass and run that ended in the end zone. What a play by Jamal Willis. With just seconds left in the third period, he hit Byron Rex for another score. Touchdown, Byron Rex. Then, on the Cougars' first possession of the fourth quarter, Detmer found Peter Tui Pelotu all alone, and the Cougars were within seven. Touchdown. But San Diego State wasn't finished yet. Both offenses were now operating in another dimension. Together, they racked up an astronomical 1,465 yards in total offense, 